Nice. Well, welcome back to uh, Freight Forecasting. I'm Michael Vincent. I'm your host here every week, Thursdays at 4 o'clock. Today, I have the delightful Donnie Gilbert that you know from uh, Freight Waves Now. <laughs> Is that right? Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Um, so, my name is Donnie Gilbert. I'm the brokerage uh, market expert here at Freight Waves. Expert of many things. Expert of many things. Right. Uh, I've spent about 16 years now in the logistics industry. Yeah, excellent. excellent. Um, the Great. majority, the majority of my um, experience is I grew up in the freight or the uh, spot markets. So the spot most, markets. So all brokerage, or are you going into care, uh, asset as well? Asset and brokerage, and gotcha. it was on-demand gotcha. capacity. Yeah. So Very what cool. we uh, what we sold back then was uh, basically we had, I believe it was 62 major metros that we. Uh, Guarantee pick up nice. within four hours. Oh, so okay. Right. I got you. The majority of my, probably 80, 85% of my freight picked up same day. Yeah. Yeah. Guaranteed capacity, not a guaranteed price. Yeah. And a long, yeah. And a, a, a long stretch for me would if it picked up the next morning. Gotcha. So um, I was very in depth in using, um, obviously, the market conditions, what market information I could get to properly price. And yes, we were a little bit more expensive because we were same day yeah, freight. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, we use this, and at first it was asset only, then we moved in for brokerage over the past several years as well. So I was pricing for both brokerage Very and cool. asset. Very cool. So you have... Uh, Tremendous amounts of uh, tremendous amounts of experience. Sorry, I got to talk into the mic. They yell at me when I don't. Um, got to get used to that. But uh, so tremendous amounts of experience in brokerage, yeah, full truckload, asset, full truckload, which is what we're talking about here, and forecasting. So forecasting, yeah. very near term, like today, yes. when you wake up in the morning, forecasting what's going to happen today is forecasting to figure out what's going on. But and then also tomorrow in in, in very very near term, right? Yes. So that's what we're going to talk about today from a a carrier and brokerage. Uh, perspective, very high level type of stuff. And uh, last week we got into some economic 101, some macro and micro in, uh, indicators and how to forecast with those near and long term. Really, those are more long term type of things. Uh, so this is a little bit shorter term, but uh, we'll talk about actual market conditions uh, looking at really uh, the supply and demand, right? Yes. So when we talk about supply and demand in, in the freight world, right, what are we talking about? Well, you know, you have uh, you have a certain number of loads in a market, mm -hmm. and you have a certain number of trucks in a market, and these right. numbers can be adjusting and changing, you know, daily, weekly, hourly. Right, right, right. Know. Throughout the day, they can be. And changing. so your prices what's, what's can change. What's true in the morning changes by the afternoon and quickly. My saying every day when I was in a brokerage at three o'clock, the rates go up. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. And so yeah. very and was, similar in an LTL yeah. world. Uh, those missed pickups, they, yes. they start to get expensive. And so yeah, um, it's a it's a very high stress job. Uh, right. But it was also very fun, and the fact that it was very challenging, mm -hmm. and no day was ever the same. Right. So in this sense, capacity is really the supply that we're talking about. The supply of capacity, uh, power units, trucks, yes. uh, units of capacity within a market, whether and, it be van, uh, dry van, reefer or a flatbed or, uh, you know, containers if you're maritime or what have yeah, you. Yeah, and demand is coming from who needs trucks. So the shippers are demanding it. The, ten the tenders. The tenders, yes. The the and tenders. so we, we have those. We've brought in several indices that we use, um, several indices that I wish I had when I was uh, spot quoting freight back in, you know, the, the, at least the last five years. This That's information right. would have been wonderful. I always think of 2018 and that epic year, how right. much better I could have done. So, well, now you have the chance to build the bridge for those that followed in your footsteps. Yes. And, and, uh, and when I first saw Sonar, um, I well, the way I first saw Sonar was uh, Zach asked me a certain market that I worked in. So I said, hey, pull it up. And he pulled it up. And I saw my pains and gains. In the charts. Yeah, very quickly. Right? And I was like, that, that is it. It's beautiful, yeah. I introduced it. Sonar to Zach in um, uh, uh, 2018 uh, when he called me when he was pricing for LTL and couldn't figure out why their, their top line revenue blew through the roof in June. And I showed him that it was actually uh, spot market volume contracts, 15,000, 12, 15,000 pounds that were killing him. Uh, because the shippers couldn't buy a truckload for less than four or five thousand dollars from here to, yes. to Dallas, from Chattanooga to Dallas, Atlanta. Very to Dallas, correct. Because of the rains returned to Southern California, and the and the produce season bled over to melon season. I think it was or yeah. whatever it was in the southeast, right? Which yep. is crazy. But let's talk about these indices because these are the ones that we're talking about for freight forecasting today in short term, uh, in, in in very near term type of uh, deciding what is happening today. How what, how's your day going to look as a broker or carrier, and what it's going to look like for the next 
next few days. So let's yeah. talk about these a little bit. So the Hall Index. What's the Hall Index? All right, so the Hall Index is an index that we've created, and it's basically the outbound tender, le tender loads minus the inbound tender loads. So it's the ratio of outbound loads to inbound loads. Yes. Head Hall market has more outbound than inbound. Yes, yeah, so basically if you're looking at a Head Hall market, you have more loads going outbound than trucks supposedly in the market. Right. And a Back Hall market would be more trucks in a market than actual loads. So the Inland Empire is a head hall market. Miami's a back hall market. Miami is definitely a back hall right? market for and 11 no, and a half months out of the year. Yeah, except for like uh, <laughs> Mother's Day and Easter, yeah. I think it is. Yeah, is, so is we're basically we're, we're tracking the flow of a uh, of freight in and out of a market. You know, in the in, beautiful. In theory, is you have a bathtub full of water, you're pouring a bucket in, and I'm pouring two buckets out. It's going to run out of water. Right. right. <laughs> but <laughs> but you know, uh, when you're using the head hall index, we don't track deadhead, but you also need to monitor all these surrounding markets as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we we'll get into those in a minute. Yeah, the surrounding markets. So let's get into these. Let's make sure that people understand this. So when we get into the next. Uh, the the next part here when we go into a sonar dashboard to kind of look at those markets they understand what we're talking about so yeah. TLT is tender lead time it's the, yes. the for, so from when I uh, as a shipper say Donnie Gilbert Express here's your load pick it up Monday today is Thursday so that's Friday that's a two day lead time right you don't count weekends in truckload or do you uh yeah, because truck loads twenty four seven. Okay. So I would count the weekends because so um, that's a so that's a three day lead time. Yeah, and so and that, Four, yeah three day lead time. And that's really important because here, um, there's you know we've all had that boss that said, hey look, this load picks up Thursday. It's already on our it's already on the books. Mm -hmm. Don't wait till Wednesday to book it. The price is going to be outrageous. Book it today on Monday. Right. Why get a better rate? Right. So tender lead times basically is is a it's an industry that I love because. Uh, it really tells you the reaction to a untouched market by a shipper. Yeah, right. What right. they're going to do to to fight capacity and fight prices. Right. And I'll leave that right there. Let's run on. Yeah, going over these. Outbound tender volume index is just that. Outbound tender volume. It's the it's the number of outbound loads in a market. Yes. Right. Yep. And tender so you're loads. You're seeing it. In near real time. So yep. whether today you're looking at yesterday's within yeah, so Whether they're accepted, whether rejected, it's the ones that are offered. Doesn't matter. It's just Doesn't offered. Matter. Yep. Uh, and we have that, and you have that inbound and outbound. So you have ITVI if you skip one. So that's inbound tender volumes. Yes. O try is outbound tender reject. So explain to me how outbound All right. tender. This rejects. is my actually my very favorite NSC in the whole wide world. Well. If I had nothing else to use and you gave me one NSC and that was it, I would take O try. I would agree with you. I, o, o try is is a, is a very strong indicator. Yeah. I like to have the other ones in order to uh, really get a flavor for what's going on and the strength of what is happening. Yeah. But O try can immediately tell you what's so going on. So never in the market. never judge a market by one indice. Right. But if I only had one, this is it. And the reason is is because tender rejection rates correlate so much with what's so going on. So in let's the, settle. So let's settle that. O try is tender rejection rates. Right. It's the yes. number of loads being rejected in a market, it, it's a, it's a percentage, it's expressed as a percentage of the total loads. Yes. Right? So if you have 100 loads in Atlanta, yes. and 25 of them are being rejected, it's you've got a 25% tender, re tender reject rate. Yes, sir. Uh, so is that homogenous across all markets? Does 25 in a market mean the same thing in Bismarck as it does in no, Ontario? No, because this is relative to the contracted rates in a market. So I can't say that the price is the same outbound Atlanta as it is uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, because they're both 25%. Gotcha. So this is based on the contracted rates. So there's norms within the different markets that you have to apply. Yes. Right? And a 25% rejection rate in the Inland Empire in Southern California would be like a huge amount of rejections. Yes, because you got to think there's so much volumes coming out of those. Yeah. To get that to move up to 25%, that is a ton right. of tender rejection rates. Right. As like Frostbite Falls, 25%. 25% is like a normal day or really actually really high acceptance. Yeah, in your in your smaller volume in your smaller markets the volatility is very high because there's such a low volume and one or two can run the uh, tender rejection rate up whereas in southern california to run up a few percentages you're going to need 30 40 50. Yeah 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 so, you have to bunch more and, yeah right. And it, it gotcha. changes the volatility. Gotcha. Makes sense. Makes sense. So hall Inbound outbound load ratio. Yep. Tender lead time is the amount of time between when a load is given to a carrier and the pickup date. Mm -hmm. Indicates uh, route and guide compliance, among other things, right? Yes. But gives you an indication of whether the shippers are feeling very, very comfortable or if they're trying to last minute uh, cover yeah. loads. Is shippers, one of those things. Shippers' reaction to the market. Shippers' reaction to the market. Outbound tender volumes, number of volumes out. Outbound tender rejects. 
No, that is percentage the, of, of, of loads being rejected. The carrier's reaction to an untouched market. Right, carriers reject. And then inbound uh, volumes and inbound tender rejects in that's coming into more. So if you're yeah. looking at Atlanta, they could be coming from anywhere. It's those loads coming in. How much capacity or loads are, how many are coming into Atlanta? And what's the acceptance rates or what, or what is the, the appetite or desire for those those carriers to come yeah, into Atlanta? Will, it, is, it would measure the willingness of a carrier to deliver into a market. Perfect. Hopefully we've beaten that horse to death. So let's look at this first dashboard here, this first sonar dashboard. And <clears throat> personally, this is the one that I like every day. And I have a lot of, of, of clients that I work with in the enterprise sales that love this type of dashboard because what I have on the left-hand side is what we call a, a market table. And on the left-hand side of it, I have every market in the United States listed. And then across the top, I have those data sets or indices that we just talked about. So you've got the hall on the, on the far left inbound outbound ratio yep your inbound tender rejects which is the willingness of of carriers to bring to come to into that market to deliver market. into that market uh the inbound tender volumes the yes. number and that's on a daily basis yes. and then the inbound tender volume weekly change what is changing over the week and then the same on the outbound outbound tender rejects outbound tender volume daily outbound tender volume over a week and then the tender lead time these yes. to me can give me quick snapshot of what is going on in a market and I use these, but uh, what's <clears throat> I could argue with you a little bit, but I love the information. But um, normally when you have a brokerage, you have a carrier, you normally have reefer and drive and split. You normally yes. don't have one person doing both. Agreed 100%. And so what was difficult about my job, I actually did reefer, drive and and flatbed. I did all three. And that was very difficult because you had to change your settings. What you know, drive in in Houston might be very weak, right. but it's summertime and flatbed in Houston might be just rocking and rolling. Right. So, so you can put up a market table that would be that would have all those in there. Well, I would drive in the reefer and the flatbed, or you could have separate well, market tables. Right now, we only have uh, drive in at the national level, but yeah. I would always break mine down, and I would have uh, reefer head haul, reefer inbound, reefer outbound, right, 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 and right. the and reefer tender rejection. Got gotcha. you. So let's just pretend. We do drive in. Yep. And is okay. So we're, we're looking at this here. So what I'm looking at here, and what you can see, is is I've charted out Lexington. And the reason I did that is because the way this is set up with the inbound on one side and the outbound on one side, you can quickly see if inbound is drying up and outbound is growing, or the or vice versa. And that would give you yeah. two different things. So looking if inbound is drying up and outbound is growing. What does that mean? What's that telling you is going well, to happen in the future? To me, to me, that's the most dangerous combination there is. And that's because if your inbound's drying up, that is cutting the supply of trucks. Mm -hmm. And you have to have trucks to move freight. Right. So that's the one thing that can actually kick a tender rejection rate up the fastest. It's because you can't book the loads. They're being rejected because of no capacity. Right. So if you're looking at this market table here and, and you see Lexington over here and you see this green, which would indicate the head haul index is growing or moving yes. towards head haul. So there's more outbound versus inbound. So there's your first indicator of capacity could possibly be drying up yes. or in this market. And then you look at the inbound tender rejects right next to it, which is also going up, Yep. which would mean that there are fewer and fewer carriers that are willing to deliver into that market. Yes. Then they, and then next to that is the inbound volumes. So not only are fewer carriers willing to deliver into the Lexington market right now, there's less loads being offered to them to accept or reject. So it it, 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 it just compounds it even more, right? Yeah, and it's and it's 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 what I say, never judge a never judge a market by one indice. We're not exactly snowballing here. It's we've kind of got a check and a check and a check that these are going in the right direction. That would tell me rates are gonna start going up. Right. And then you go further and there's more check boxes. So you have outbound tender rejects, which actually dropped, which would be kind of a Mm, yeah. Maybe a squiggling line, not a check, right? Yeah. It's kind of like, okay. But, but we're going to be counting the checks. We're going to be counting the checks. But then you have up on tender volumes on a day over day up and a week over week up, what is it, 821%? Yeah, so now you got more trucks leaving the market than you have, and you're cutting the supply. And you're cutting the supply. Cutting in. So quickly, clicking on these can quickly chart what's going on here. So this first uh, chart here on this dashboard is inbound tender volume index, which is the red line. And you can see that since like February 6th, it's just fallen off a cliff and continues to nosedive. Yes. So that would indicate to me that there's just less and less and less loads being offered for delivery into the Lexington market. Correct. Right? And then the green 
Let me go back up to that, sorry. And then the green is your outbound tender volume, which is just spiking. Yes. Re and fairly recently, though, since the 9th. So a couple, yeah. three days later, that starts to spike and continues to spike. So you've got mass exodus of outbound. Yeah, and this would make me nervous as a shipper as well. This, this, this gap here makes you very nervous as yeah. a shipper. Shippers are in trouble. Yeah, now, so I'm going to start extending but that. But then broker-carrier, carrier's yeah. thinking, let me get some capacity in there and get me some loads. Sure. Broker's saying... I can maintain my margins or possibly get a few cents extra a mile on this, right? Yes. So as a broker, I'm actually, hey, it's not going to be a few cents. <laughs> in, a, in a broker the world, when I see this, when I see volatility, I start getting excited. So I'm going to start looking at this and saying, hey, this is a market that's going to give me some opportunity to increase my margins. Right. And so if you're, and you know, and the other part is, you know, in this day and time, a lot of people are still using a rating tool. So they're actually, we see this on the last couple of days. Right. Here, the 9th and the 10th and the 11th. Yeah, they're seven, right eight days, nine days behind. So I'm going to take advantage of carriers not using that or using a rating tool, yeah. and I'm going to push their rates down because they don't see all this. They don't fight see it just yet. yet. That's right. They don't see it yet. So when you start to see this gap starting to happen, is if you're a shipper, you really want to, like you just said. Make sure you secure that capacity at the rates that you have right now. So you want to take a little bit extra diligence with your routing guide and your contracted carriers. And if they're not giving you something, you need to jump out actively into the spark market faster now, right? If you if you're Before, if you're overflowing and you can't get that capacity from yeah. your from your contract, you need to jump in the spot market quickly. As this continues, rates are going to continue rates are going to, to go, go up. up. Right. So when you say jump in it quickly, you are extending your tender lead time. That's exactly right. And earlier. that's where you're looking at tender lead time in in Lexington is actually up 1.6 percent yeah. day over day. So, so you would think that that's what's happening. And that's what I love about tender lead times is normally when you see tender lead time starting to creep up. That is either they're fighting higher carrier rates or they're trying to book, book capacity because of some concerns. And when it lightens up or softens up, you'll see that start to turn back down because there's plenty of capacity. They don't need to book it. They don't want to book it too early because the rates might drop. So Beautiful. you'll see them start to retract. Yep. So real quickly here on the right-hand side of this dashboard, outbound, we looked at, so we got volumes here, right? Now yep. looking at rejections, what's going on with rejections, which just is another tech boxes of what's going on and the strength of this move. Yes. Uh, so the red mountain that you have here is the outbound tender rejects. And you can see that they started spiking since the 9th, correlates over here, and now they dropped a bit over the last few days. But inbound tender rejects, volumes are dropping, and inbound tender rejects are spiking madly. They've crossed. Yep. I would say... And the yellow is the van because we're looking at van, so it's dipped with with this. So I, I guess Lexington is really being driven by the van market. I would say by this, without looking at the reefer, I would imagine that if we looked yes. at the reefer, it's still being driven by a dry van market. I would see if the average here has dropped down. I'll know, tried the six point six five. Then your reefer is probably going to be a little bit below that. Right. So, so this is very this driven. to me looks like this is this is going to bounce off of this 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 new low right here and and a new high low. I right. would say it's going to bounce based on these trends rejects are going to continue to go up. So you see this right here on the 9th where it's down to about, you know, below 5.5%. Yeah. And you see it jumping up all the way to pretty much 7.25. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a, when you see a big upward movement in your tender rejection rates of, you know, one and a half, two, two and a half, three percent. That is the first site of a large um, increase in spot rates. Yeah, and that and that's the first tier to the uh, spot rates going up. You see your tender rejection rate start. So we have upward pressure, upward movement, pushing those rates up. Yeah. So this is probably a little bit of a setback as they first started to jump up. But if you see this right here continue here in the middle where the inbound and outbound continue to grow apart and supply is being cut and the, yeah. the other part, now you will have some people start to move into that market. But think about where Lexington, uh, Kentucky is, the region. It's not like there's easy capacity north, south. You know, there's, it's a, it's no, a, yeah, yeah, you're right. And you know me, my, my dashboards, yeah. I've got what I call Great Lakes and, and I'm looking at, uh, I love to look at Columbus, Ohio, Cleveland, Toledo, Chicago, yeah. Joliet, and, and all that because they interact so tightly yeah. with each you other. You do have Cincinnati above you. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, are they going to, you know, uh, it, I don't remember the exact miles off the top of my head from Cincinnati to Lexington, but I believe it's over 100 miles. And, and they get nervous on moving that far because yeah. the load might cancel. Sure. Uh, and, and, and they're not all that much further away from just going north through Dayton into Columbus. Exactly. So... So. Here you have a market that's kind of um, I'm not going to say secluded, but it's 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 got some areas slightly around insulated, it. slightly insulated. Let's call it. And that. so that can also have an effect. And that so can now also... you're talking you're talking about the different markets. 
Yeah. So let's so, jump into that a little bit. <laughs> the surrounding right? markets. Let's, let's go into center, surrounding markets. So the next thing I want to talk to you about, and this was really inspired by your, what you were talking about the other day, I believe it was two days ago on, on Freightways Now, when you're talking about the uh, refrigerated rejection rate of 55%, I think it was, in Outrageous. Memphis. Just, I almost fell over. I was like, he's got to be wrong. And yeah. went over to my sonar and started pulling it up. Uh, the dashboard and started building out a dashboard. It took me about five minutes to figure out that not only were you right, but figure out why it, it was. Yeah. So I, I always preach: never judge a market by uh, just one indice. Use two or three to make sure everything's correlating. And also look at the surrounding markets because that can have a very large impact. Right. And I always think of Atlanta when I think of uh, when I think of the surrounding markets. Funny you should mention that because John. it's like it's like the boat on the ocean. Uh, Atlanta is the big center point for the Southeast. They have a lot of volumes right. and the surrounding markets are always weak during this time. So everybody, if you, before I even look back in the day, if I was going to be delivering into Macon, if I was going to be going into <clears throat> maybe Eastern Alabama or maybe even into parts of South Carolina, my first thought was I'm going to price this into South Carolina, but I'm also going to price it for deadheading back to Atlanta. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. this is why. And this is why. And and so I've spoken on the show before, not many times because this is the fourth show, um, about the and but in speaking with customers and speaking at different speaking engagements, et cetera, the interplay between the different modes of transportation is is often overlooked and is extremely important. Uh, rail movement and capacity constraints, et cetera, can affect truckloads. So maritime affects both of those. Both of those affect air, et cetera. Yes. Uh, so, but markets affect each other. Yes. And so when we were looking at Lexington, we talked about it. It's 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 a fairly insulated market and you can be fairly confident that if there's a strong movement in there, it's, you're pretty, it's because of that market and that's yes. what's happening. Here, what I found really interesting and the reason I went he's out of his mind is Atlanta's outbound volume of refrigerated loads is more than triple that of Memphis. Yet the rejection rate is only 7%, and the rejection rate in Memphis was uh, what, 55, 55. Almost 56%, yes. 56%, on, on not even not even like a quarter of the loads. How is yes. that possible? Well, if you look here on your map here, you see uh, you've got um, you get the oh, volumes right. in, in shaded, right? Yeah. And then you've got the... Uh, the rejects are the are the height. Yeah, so the height here. When you look at Memphis here that you got mm -hmm. pointed to, look at Little Rock there to the west, and then you have some markets also to the north there a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is area that's uh, have a, has a lot of demand for reefer, uh, refrigerated equipment right now. So, any capacity that's coming into these areas, you know, you only you really only got I forty running across through here. So you don't have uh, you have what fifty seven going up to um, to um, Chicago, but right. In this area, you have a lot of demand for reefers, and you don't have as much reefer going in there. So that's going to have the effect. Where can you draw capacity from if you can't get what's already there? Well, a lot of the surrounding markets are also eating up reefer capacity as well. So it's not going to be exactly available to Memphis right now. And you got right, even right, the national right. market there picking up a little so, bit. So Ad Atlanta's got a ton of capacity Yes, that is able to handle the much, much larger Yes. volume of tendered refrigerated loads yes right and there's no markets around it that seem to be exploding onion season yeah. isn't here correct i don't have vidalia onions in my refrigerator <clears throat> in my refrigerator right now so it, it's it's fairly insulated itself because of seasonality one thing yeah. right so this is why when you bring up like our, if you brought up just otvi on a map otvi on a map says this is where the freight is coming out of and i always tell people that does not mean because it's dark blue that the rates are going to be higher. It has nothing to do with rates. Right. Rates are based heavily on capacity. That's why I want to look at your um, your head haul index along with our uh, uh, outbound tender rejection rates as well compared to that market and the surrounding markets. Atlanta has capacity coming from the entire southeast. Yeah, absolutely. And if we looked into this, it could be uh, uh, possible that the inbound refrigerated loads in these markets here are spiking which is providing capacity and fueling the outbound yes. out of Atlanta and the reverse happening over here. And I would think that's probably part of it. Would not weather 
in this area over here that we've been seeing storm after storm kind of go through here for temp, uh, you know, environmentally controlled shipments be eating up some of that capacity that's having an effect yeah, on right, us as well? Right now with the cold weather coming through, the snowstorms, uh, you'll have a lot of products. You know, we all think of, you know, our drinks, our colas. Yeah. Uh, but there's other products. There's soups, and there's also a lot of industrial products. Uh, that paint, might be, paints, et cetera? Uh, protect from freeze type of stuff, right? Yes. I moved a lot of paints out of uh, Nevada into Northern California. I had to be careful of for protect from freeze. But also any fluids that are in maybe a plastic type con container that can freeze and expand and bust the containers. And so here they'll put on there, and you got to be very careful. You got to read where it says protect from freeze because you use a reefer because the trailer walls are insulated. You may or may not turn that reefer on because of the weather. If it's, you know, 29 degrees, I'll probably throw it in there. The extra, um, first of all, it's going to get loaded at, at a room temperature from a warehouse normally. Right. It'll hold its own heat for, right. for quite a while. Right. But if you're getting into extreme cold or for a long period of time, the new reefers now can either, one, maintain a certain temperature. Yeah. So set it on 38 degrees. That's above freezing, 40 degrees. Or, you know, uh, you can actually heat them a little bit as well. It works like your, uh, yeah. your household um not water pump, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Air, AC and heat. A AC and heat. Yeah. <laughs> heat pump. There we yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, I was having a flashback to my early days pounding the uh, uh, docks in LTL, and, and Freeze Protect was uh, keeping a running tractor under the kingpin of a trailer yeah. as we loaded it. Yeah, and we, yeah, and we say, you know, if you're, if you're going to be above 28 degrees to keep a, to keep a, a tractor running, it keeps it vibrating, keeps the water oscillating. yeah. yeah. But what scares me more about those now is they've 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 come so far with um yeah. uh, with the tractors and the air ride suspension and all this yeah. they don't vibrate like they yeah, used to yeah they don't protect from freeze like they used to yeah so <laughs> I always say if it's going to be below thirty two go ahead and stick it on a reefer unless it's yeah. just going an hour or two awesome well this was really good stuff hopefully it's been helpful for everybody else it, it, the the interplay of of the supply and demand and being able to see that in in near real time and real time is very very important to see not only what is happening today in markets, but identifying those markets and where those opportunities and hurdles may be, depending on your, yeah. your really your perspective, if you're a shipper, carrier, broker, and really brokers play both sides of it, right? They're yeah. a shipper and a carrier, and right? It's, and, it's, and it's really with, the, with these charts right here, it's the last seven days and able to see the trends and the changes that are happening in those last seven days. Right. You might know, okay, everybody knows uh, Miami's a tough market right now. And mm -hmm. as it improves, it's like, yeah, it, it, it's, yeah I, I know it's a bad market. It. But you can't put a number to it if I actually asked you. And sometimes that can be important. That can be the important of you being able to raise your rates $25 or $50 and increasing your revenues a little bit. Oh, yeah, because absolutely. Because if, if you can't actually put a number to it, you're going to be behind the ball. And then you're going to be reactive to the market where looking at a chart like this, looking at these graphs, looking at these maps can make you proactive to yeah, a market. I, I, I actually chart and monitor and forecast uh, Miami because what I find very interesting in those type of markets is even though it's a severe backhaul market, you can see OTRI spike and rates yes. spike. For short, brief periods of time. Yes, and some of that is, you know, like for uh, like because for most carriers yeah. going in there have already figured out where they're going to pick up their next load to go north, right? Yeah. In my former life, we we had terminal in in Miami. We'd go down to Miami, but we had already contracted rates that were coming out of northern Florida to get us back to Atlanta and at least pay the fuel, right? So yep. we weren't accepting loads out of Miami. So it can be a market to get to at times. Yes, and they'll leave, but you know, you have also you'll have. Uh, uh, seasonal uh, rate changes, even though there is a lot of capacity. Mm -hmm. So, and you'll see that in OTRI, and you may not see the the extended tender lead times or the volumes increase very much, but you'll see OTRI start jumping up, and you'll see that's a key. It's the orange flag, I call right, it. Right, right. And uh, that's rates jumping up already. Why? Is it an orange flag because it's Miami, or? Well, because right now you got you got you got fresh cut flowers flying in demand that, for oh, uh, for that, Valentine's Day right. tomorrow. So reefer is going to be in demand. Yes. So uh, yeah. right now they're going to be moving those out, and then yeah. of course uh, we're going to have produce season uh, starting in Miami from all the produce coming up from South America, and then Easter, and then and, and then, then it's going to start Day. start yeah. from there. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent stuff. So um, near term, immediate. Uh, monitoring and forecasting of what's going on in these markets, utilizing these indices yes. that are that are indicate supply and demand. How much yes. capacity is there? How much uh, supply is there? And the demand, the load tenders that are there, and and looking at those tender rejections and looking at those trends, being able to predict and forecast out what is going to go on for the next at yeah. least few days to a week and how yeah. strong they are. But then looking at what is going around in those those surrounding markets to see is is that having an effect? Because that can play into the strength of that trend, right? Yes. I want to see my head haul index, 
But on top of that, I want to see what is causing my head haul index to move. Is it an increase or decrease in, uh, in outbound volumes? Is it an increase or decrease in inbound uh, tender volumes? I want to see how my shippers are reacting to that market. And I'm right going to look at tender lead times. I want to see how carriers are re reacting to a market. I'm going to jump in and look at my tender rejection rates. And then I'm going to see how other markets could affect about what I'm about to bid. Beautiful. Put all that together, and you'll have probably the most optimal bid you can have. Excellent. Hey, nice words of wisdom to end yes. the show. Thank you very much, Donnie. Thank you, Michael. Will you come back on sometime? Yes, absolutely. Excellent. Beautiful. Hey, that's it for this show. We'll see you next week, uh, Thursday, uh, 4 o'clock. Uh, freight forecasting with Michael Vincent. Peace and love.